Hello and welcome to our latest lesson in Windows Phone Development. And in this lesson we are talking about web services. And in this lesson today I've talked a little bit about what a web service is and why they're important and of course why we want to implement them into our Windows Phone applications. So I'm going to walk you through uh, connecting to a web service, checking that our device has connectivity, Right, all of those important things that I talked about in the lesson. And what, you know, like most things on Windows Phone, what makes this process really easy is a lot of the intercommunication between uh, the web service, wherever it's hosted, and our application. A lot of that hookup and interface stuff that we have to go through, and, and if you're doing my Android lessons as well, um, you've had to kind of suffer through, uh, is all handled by Visual Studio. So, I mean, where our I think uh, my runtime on the Android video was somewhere around 45 minutes. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be, I think, all of seven lines of code. So it, it's it's very simple to uh, hook up to web services, especially SOAP um, web services, using asynchronous tasks in Windows Phone 8.1. So I'm going to start by creating a new project. And we are using a Silverlight application. And so um, I'm going to give this a name, and this is going to be my um, web service. Now, this is our temp convert, our temp convert, right? Because what we're going to do is connect to, make sure that we're targeting the Windows Phone 8.1. We're going to connect to this web service, and I'm sure you're probably familiar with the W3 schools. Uh, they have this web service that's uh, publicly available out here that does temperature conversion. So um, it's got a Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit function. And when you publish your web service, you can make it public like these guys have. And you get this uh, service um, kind of declaration page, this service description. Um, and the, it's an ASMX. And, and not all services are going to end in an ASMX, but I know that this is a, um, a .NET based service because of that. Um, probably written in like C Sharp or Visual Basic. So uh, on my service description page, I can click on the various functions and it'll even give you a little test. So I could test and say if I put in 30 and invoke, what am I going to get back? I'm going to get back a string and it's going to be 86. And I could check and make sure that 30 Celsius is actually 86 Fahrenheit. Um, so what we're going to do, and it gives you some examples here of, of how to call it and things like that and uh, a list of operations, right? That's that page we looked at. So what we're gonna do is invoke this web service in our application so that the user can type in the temperature in Celsius and it will return the proper temperature in Fahrenheit. And then if you wanted to call the Fahrenheit to Celsius, you could do that too. So let's come over to our application, go ahead and give it a name and do all that fun stuff you like to do when you just get started. All right, so what we want to do is I'm um, going to want a text box so that they could type in the temperature that they want to convert. So this is going to be the temp box. I don't want any text in it. And you could go ahead and add in a little text block here. Temp in... Celsius. I can't type today, I swear to goodness. All right, and then we're going to need a button so that we can uh, invoke this when they're ready. So this is going to be the, um, so what I name that temp box convert button and then just a text block down here for our result I'm gonna name it result and I don't want it to say anything All right simple stuff simple stuff I like to go ahead and build and save and okay great all right so uh, before we jump into the code 
we are going to, like I said, Visual Studio is going to help us make that service reference uh, connection. So we're going to come over to our Solution Explorer. We're going to right click on the solution and we're going to add a service reference. Nope, we got to right click on the project. Sorry, on the project. Add service reference. There we go. And you'll get this window. Now the address it's asking for is that ASMX file. All right, so if I come back over here and I have that ASMX link, that's what I want. And I paste it in there. And when I click go, it's going to go out and find and see did I give an, an address that really has a, a web service. And it does. And you can click on these and you can see like the endpoints that are available here and the operations that are available. We can see that we can connect to this both through HTTP POST and SOAP. It has the same operations. And so here's where you want to name the namespace. As you pull this web service into your application and kind of compile it into your project, Visual Studio is going to set up a namespace for it. So I'm going to name it temp convert. Just it's always helpful to name them like variables, especially if you're implementing more than one web service. So click OK. It's going to go ahead and pull that in. You're going to see a service reference folder appear over in your Solution Explorer with the service reference that you have named over here on the side. So now that we have that all hooked up, let's come over and double click our convert button so that we get our code. Super. OK, so two using statements we're going to implement here. One of these using statements is so that we can check to make sure that we actually have network connectivity before we just jump right in and start messing with things on the network. Because right in the lesson I talked about, you know, when we're creating apps that require a web service, it, our app is going to require constant connectivity, either via a mobile connection or a Wi-Fi connection. So we need to make sure that they actually have something like that and uh, we're not reaching for a web service on a device that doesn't have a network connectivity uh, currently available. So using system.net.network information is the library that we're going to need to be able to check on that. Now you also um, can go ahead and add the using statement for your uh, web service. It really depends on um, I named my project temp convert and then I named the namespace temp convert. So that looks funny. Um, this is the project name, whatever you named your project. If you don't know, you can come over to your solution explorer or you can look up here, visual studio, tell you up at the top. And then this is what I named the service. I just happen to name them the same thing. <laughs> I'm sure it loves that. Um, so you can go ahead and, and import in your, uh, and put in the using statement for your service reference, um, here as well. So down here in our convert button, uh, in order to check if there's actually a network interface available, right, I'm just going to set up a little Boolean variable and it's network interface dot uh, get is network available. And there's no way really to check if it's a Wi-Fi connection or a mobile connection. This is just going to return a true or false if it can get out. So if they actually have a network connectivity, that's super. Um, else, you know, we don't want this to do anything. So, right, they have network connectivity. Awesome. Okay, so how do we invoke this uh, web service reference that we have already connected? Well, we just need to create an instance of the object. So create an instance of the web service client object. And so it's going to be um, temp convert dot, in this case, uh, the temp convert soap client is what we're going to use to make our connection. And so give your object a name and that's going to equal a new, oops, equals new uh, temp convert soap client. Right. So now that we have an instance of the object, we can make that asynchronous call to uh, whatever method we want. So we're going to call the uh, I'm going to call it C to F method, right? Celsius to Fahrenheit. So it's client dot 
uh, we see the Celsius to Fahrenheit asynchronous method call. And it takes a string, which is going to be uh, what's in that text box. So it's a uh, uh, temp box dot text. We'll just pull it right out of there. You don't need it in a variable, do you? <laughs> maybe, maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, so that right there, it's like an all in one step. You don't have to, you know, if you're doing my Android lessons, it, it is painful. You don't have to wrap it up and package it, and tell it where it's going or anything like that. Visual Studio does all the heavy lifting. So all we need to do is um, check for the response. And so in this case, this web service already has an event handler set up. So if we go to and set up, set up the event handler that is listening for eh, listening for the response. So this is client dot um, Celsius to Fahrenheit completed, which is an event handler that sits there and waits and listens for the um, the response to come back. And so when that response comes back, it's going to raise that event. Now raising an event is actually a, a technical term. Um, Oh, why are you mad? Oh, okay. Yeah, we have to set that up. Um, it's, it's a technical term. To raise an event means that you're adding it to CLR's call stack. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a method that's named this right here. And when it raises that event, we will be able to pick up that result. Right? It's basically like toast being ready. Pops up in the toaster, and we're good to go. Time for toast. Okay, so here's our, our method. We're naming it the client Celsius to Fahrenheit completed, which is the name of the event handler that is built into this client object. Um, we need to capture two uh, parameters in here. So we, we have the object, which is the sender, and then we have the um, Celsius to Fahrenheit completed event args. Just name it whatever, I name it E. This right here, this is the response. This is the object that is coming back from the SOAP client. And so all we need to do is take the response and put it in the result text. And so the result dot text is going to be the um, E dot result. And then I'm going to add Fahrenheit, an F, right? That's it. That's it. You can go ahead and test it. Let's go ahead and run our emulator and check it. Oh, wait. Do I have an error? Maybe I forgot something. It's mad at me about something. Where is it mad at me about something? Okay. I just ended up changing the name of my service reference to temp convert service. I knew naming them the same thing was going to give me some kind of problem. So don't name your namespace and your service the same thing. That's kind of funny that I just did that. So uh, yeah, project namespace dot name of service. So when you pull in your service reference, make sure it's got a unique name. All right, so now we can test this out in our emulator and make sure it works. Okay, so here is our app. We can go ahead and type in something in Celsius and 30 is what I tested earlier, which came back as 86 Fahrenheit. So when I click convert, there it is, 86 Fahrenheit. So what's happening? is we are creating an instance of that object. The Visual Studio already handles all of the where is it going, handshakes, envelopes, protocols. It's doing all that heavy lifting for us. So all we have to do is create an instance of the object, pick which method we want to run, and this will fire it off where it, to where it's going via how it needs to go and, and all of that stuff that goes into web services. And then we just check for, hey, has it responded to us yet? And if so, we run this method down here and, and print out the result. And so if you wanted to kind of do your own um, test and, and practice a little bit more with web services, you could practice running the Fahrenheit to Celsius and set up another um, test to see if you could convert these back and forth. And so that is it. That is how you invoke a web service, um, SOAP-based based asynchronous web service on Windows Phone 8.1.